The provider of commuter bus services in Gauteng, Patco, recently launched a new electronic ticketing system in partnership with Blue Label distribution company TicketPro. However, commuters seem to be unhappy with the new system. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to Soweto Today. Soweto Today. Tonight we are talking about the new TAP system introduced by Patco for commuters to have much more convenient experience, which commuters do not seem to like. Now, Joining us in studio is Patco spokesperson Lindo Kutle Kulu to tell us more about the system and the Deputy Secretary of Batu Bili Soweto Commuters Forum, Nobuhle Butelezi, who will help us understand some of the challenges they face since the introduction of the TEP system. Thank you so much for joining us in studio on the show. Now, Lindo, let's start with you. Talk to us about the new TEP system. What is it about and what is the reason behind this idea? You remember that uh, government has a program, a smart mobility program, that is aimed to be realized in 2030. This smart, smart mobility program requires that uh, industry stakeholders uh, partake and join in the movement of digitalizing the electronic system as far as our tickets are concerned. Now we are part of that, we are trying to move towards that and what we've done is to try and uh, uh, find a service provider like Blue Label which uh, provides us with this uh, uh, ticketing, ticketing selling. But it is all uh, actually trying to be part of the integrated transport system where government envisions will be able to travel across transport so you'd be able to leave a how train with the very same ticket, you're going into a bus with the very same ticket, you'll be able to go into a taxi. That is the vision of government but as a, a service provider for government we too need to be compliant in terms of that system and that is why we've introduced this new smart tap system mm -hmm. so we understand that uh, convenience is key and that Patco wants um, that for their commuters what is different um, from the about the new tap system and the one that commuters are used to the one that uh, commuters are used to is a Wayfair tic uh, ticketing system. It was an old system that was in fact used in trains. Uh, <laughs> in our part of being a service provider, we looked at uh, some of the systems at the time, uh, years <laughs> ago, and tried to find a system that would work. This is a manual one where you just tap and it gives you a ticket and that's it. But like I said, it's a matter of moving towards the smart mobility program, being mm -hmm. part of the movement to the fourth industrial revolution as far as ticketing system and traveling is concerned. And that is why now we're saying that this new digital means of traveling uh, is uh, looking towards, uh, you know, exploring a world of possibilities when it comes to traveling, mm -hmm. an integrated system as far as being a cross board. But at the same time, most importantly, it's looking at issues of a, a, a benefiting commuters in a sense that a bus can no longer be a bus. And Anymore. You need Wi-Fi in a bus, you need to be able to travel across other transport sectors in a bus and you need to uh, be able to move uh, to a, a space where you are able to buy a tic a tickets uh, over your phone and all of that. Those are the things that government is looking at as far mm -hmm. as transport providers are concerned and that is the world of possibilities that we are looking at. Yes, right now those things are not happening. It's because we are at the implementation phase of this uh, system. But I can tell you that it's all aimed at ensuring that while we move Move towards this digitalized uh, sort of a ticketing system but it also benefits the commuters in a sense that it can no longer just be commuting from one point mm -hmm. to another but it also needs to have added benefits mm -hmm. which are some of them I've mentioned. Um, let's bring it to you. As a commuter, what would you say about the new system that has been introduced by Padco? It seems like some people are not satisfied with it. Uh, with the new system that Padco introduced, when he called us in the meeting, they did explain about the new tapping system and then mm -hmm. we went on and then we searched about this new system. We went to El Dorado Park with the chairman of Batupili. When we, we were in El Dorado, El Dorado Park, we find there were challenges that they were having. And then we came back and we did ask part co-management in Soweto that uh, El Dorado Park is facing challenges. Are you sure that this system is not going to affect uh, Soweto commuters? They did assure us that the system is going to be everything is going to write, run smoothly, there will be no problems. Yes, the system was introduced after the strike of the bus, of the bus drivers, mm -hmm. only to find out the system is not, um, is not accommod accommodating, accommodating everyone. everyone in Soweto. First and foremost, when you tap with this smart tech, it takes you 30 seconds mm. to, to issue out your sleep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you arrive in the bus, when you're trying to tap, the, 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 the tech will tell mm -hmm. you that you don't have trips. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've, I've been uh, loaded. Mm -hmm. loaded my 10 trips, mm -hmm. 
hands off last week's Sunday. Mm -hmm. I loaded my 10 trips. When I arrive in the bus in the morning, my 10 trips are not there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lundo, I'd like you to answer because she's already, I was going to ask her actually mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the first challenge that the challenges that they experienced and who they reported to. But she mentioned that. How did you respond to that? Look, there are a lot of issues that we're encountering. First of all, uh, Uma Mush is right in saying that when it comes to El Dorado Park, there were already challenges there. And uh, this is in a comparison of saying that El Dorado Park is a smaller area as far as our operations are concerned. And when you move to an area like Isoweto, where 500 buses would need to be operating on each and every single day, you're looking at a bigger, bigger area. And that is why uh, we had anticipated that we'd be able to improve the system before we launch, but we anticipated that there would be some teething challenges mm -hmm. in implementing this a particular uh, project but I can tell you that some of those uh, challenges were surprising to us in a sense that if you find a commuter having to lose uh, an entire a week's trip uh, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. one tap that's a challenge for us but some of the things we've responded to first of all we have issued an alert we have issued an instruction to our drivers to say that no one must be left behind mm -hmm. during this time when we are dealing with the implementation of this uh, tech system so if you find a commuter for example who's lost their entire trips what they basically need to do is show them their card and mm -hmm. uh, uh, show their um, receipt that they bought the ticket with and they'll be able to ride in our buses. It's a provision we've made but we know exactly some of the challenges we're facing and in fact uh, the system update in terms of recovering those trips mm -hmm. uh, we were able to implement it over the weekend working around the clock and on Monday mm -hmm. some commuters I'm sure could attest to the fact that uh, when they got into the bus the driver would have been able to help them in terms of recovering some of those trips so mm -hmm. it is a mammoth task in terms of uh, 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 bringing about such a system but we are working around the clock to ensure that we deal with some of those challenges mm -hmm. in order to make it work as it's supposed to work because you did hear from what I said in the beginning mm -hmm. it's all about benefiting the commuters and mm -hmm. making sure that they are part of this big transport sector that will be moving to a more digitalized environment. Mm -hmm. um, I really do hope that as time goes on, everyone is going to get on board so that you're able to introduce um, everyone into the digital world. Now, PADCOR takes pride in making sure that their commuters have a much easier, quicker and safer and more comfortable ride to and from work. Now, on Sunday, about five PADCOR buses were set alight. It's not clear if they were torched by the angry commuters or we actually don't know. But after the end break, we will talk more about that make sure that you don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching So to Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just joined us, we are talking about the new Spot a Smart Tap system that was introduced by Padco for convenience for their commuters, which they really did not receive well. To dissect this, we're still joined in studio by the Padco spokesperson, Lindogu Tulu, as well as Nobu Lebu Telezi, who is the Deputy Secretary of Batubili Soweto Commuters Forum. During the aid break, I said to you, you actually asked me that, why am I saying it's your people, your commuters that actually burnt the buses? Mm -hmm. What is the answer to that? Look, I, I think first we must contextualize that we woke, we woke up to, in fact, we, we, report, we got reports of news at around 9, 10 uh, p.m. on Sunday that uh, some of our buses at the Nansfield Depot were on fire. <laughs> and uh, what then we did was to go to the security that is stationed there to get a report of what exactly happened. According to the security, they were patrolling. There was an unidentified number of people that were in our depot that were not supposed to be there. Uh, upon confronting them, they then sh uh, shot at the security um, and uh, they fled uh, and then while security was dealing with that incident we saw that about three buses were on fire and mm -hmm. while we tried to move some of the buses to not have a domino effect mm -hmm. of the fire we did see that uh, there were two more that were caught uh, you know that caught fire but mm -hmm. uh, all in all it's five buses uh, four uh, two of our contractors one has lost four buses another one had lost one bus so it's a situation that uh, we find ourselves in but at this stage I think the most important thing is that police are investigating this. We've opened the case as part to say that there's such an incident that happened within our, per our, our, our premises. Uh, we cannot cast aspersions or mm -hmm. make speculations at this stage as to who exactly is behind this, but there is a criminal element that needs to be investigated in terms of the arson, attempted murder, as well as uh, just a trespass that we've seen happening mm -hmm. at our premises. So at this stage, for me, I think it's important to allow the police to uh, investigate and uh, be able to get to the bottom of who exactly 
is behind this and then we'll be able to deal with this threat if it is a threat and we'll be able to deal with the repercussions of this uh, incident. Mm -hmm. Snobosle, let's bring it to you as a commuter. We have seen the protests and uh, obviously has mentioned about five buses were set alight. Do you think this is connected to the smart app system that was uh, introduced or was it done by commuters? Well, what do you think? No, the banning of buses was not by, done by commuters because we always take pri pride of what we have. We know that Patco doesn't have enough buses. If we ban the buses, mm -hmm. we're still going to be more short of buses. So we cannot ban buses as much as if there is a protest in Soweto, wherever we go, we try not to put um, the bus in that route where we know that there is protest, we use another route. So we always protect uh, Patco's property because we know that we need this transport. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to come back to you, Lindo. I want you to paint us a picture of how Patco gets affected uh, financially in terms of operations when buses are set alight or the infrastructure is vandalized. What really happens? Because I think some people are not really exposed to the reality or the repercussions uh, mm -hmm. of, of what really happens when you know, infrastructure is damaged or the buses are set alight. Our current projections in terms of the number of commuters we um, transport every day is 250,000 to 300,000. Now when you look at one bus, you must think that it's 60 plus people that would be affected mm -hmm. if such an incident happens. So it's five buses, multiply that by 60, you'll see the impact that it has in our communities. But Mambusha was right again in saying that Patco does not have the infrastructure that it requires to carry out this mandate. Mm -hmm. And this issue stems from the fact that we have not received um, a contract from government since 1999. So 21 years we've been functioning and operating on extended contracts. What this means is that whatever change had happened from 1999 up to today, there hasn't been a, an account in terms of the fuel hikes, mm -hmm. in terms of the inflate, the, the, the escalations as far as our wage bill is concerned. So mm -hmm. the issue of our expenses keeps on rising and rising. But where we need to be getting our money from, which is the subsidies from government, is not coming there. So we are actually encouraged as part of the fact that we've been able to meet with the MEC, the new MEC of transport uh, in Gauteng. She's committed herself to saying that it's absolutely uncalled for, that for 21 years we haven't been able able to get the money, the necessary funds to provide the service that we've been providing. Patco has not made a profit in the last 10 years. So you can understand some of the challenges we have when it comes to replacing buses, when it comes to uh, the old buses that are supposed to be taken out of the system, but mm -hmm. they cannot because we don't have the funds to do so. So those are the, really the fundamental issues that cause these frustrations that we see out there. So when you see commuters protesting, it's not a matter of saying that they're being ridiculous, that mm -hmm. they don't know what they're doing it's because they bear the brunt of all of these issues that I'm mentioning. So mm -hmm. they have the right yes to look at Patco because we are the service provider mm -hmm. and say that they're demanding more. But the real issue comes from the subsidies that we're not getting from government. Mm -hmm. The better the subsidy, the better the funding, the better the service would be. We haven't unfortunately been able to get that. Um, speaking about commuters uh, protesting, so let me bring it to you. Would you say that protesting is the best way of um, communication that companies understand? Uh, according to Patco, I will say he he understands the pro the protesting is the is the only way that we can reach to Patco because, for instance, with this smart text, we've almost had three meetings, mm -hmm. but he doesn't listen. Mm -hmm. So we, we we are not proud of ourselves that we are protesting, but it comes from the commuters. Mm -hmm. As Batupili, uh, we always listen to commuters, what the commuters want, and then we, we, we do whatever the commuters want. So mm -hmm. even now, we are still waiting for the reply, and then the reply when comes back from Patco before um, uh, Friday, Friday mm -hmm. evening, we'll take back the report to the commuters. The commuters will decide what to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, since you're the voice for the people, I actually want you to paint us a picture of the frustrations. What are people saying to you? Uh, because I, like I said earlier, you're allowed to, to actually <laughs> fight with them. This is a platform okay. where you can actually show your frustration because, uh, you know, we really need to get an idea of how people are feeling through you. Okay. But uh, the, 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 the sad part is when you woke up in the morning, you, are, you know we are going to work. Mm -hmm. We have estimated, let's say, from Soweto to Sentin. I know I must be in a bus for almost one hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen like that. Because uh, from my side, I stay in Jablani. The bus 
comes from Mdeni via Zola, Jablani, Zondi, mm -hmm. Dobsonville until until. So mm -hmm. if, let's say in one bus stop, there are 10 commuters, mm -hmm. each commuter will take 30 to 40 seconds mm -hmm. to tap and sit down. Mm -hmm. So I'm all, we, the commuters are almost late every day to mm -hmm. work. Others mm -hmm. are sitting on their last written morning mm -hmm. because of these smart taps. And the PADCO is the cheapest transport that everybody can afford. But mm -hmm. since this smart tapping system, it's, no, it's, not, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Everybody is it's late at work mm -hmm. al almost every day. I actually wanted to ask about that, you know, but it's obviously something that we're going to discuss on the last segment of the show. Doesn't it take time to literally, that 30 seconds, you know, I'm imagining the queue, people that are trying to get into the bus, but we are going to have a conversation after the break, ad break. Let's take a short breather, and after the ad break, we're getting to know the way forward from here. We will see you right after this. Welcome back. You are still watching So It Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We have unfortunately reached the last segment of the show and we are about to wrap up the conversation that's about the new smart tap system that Partco recently implemented. Now, Lindo, we know that the system has been suspended, right? Because there's so many things that you need to revisit and, and fix. What is the way forward? Um, is Partco fixing that? What should we expect? I think not suspended yet um, mm -hmm. because we do have a memorandum of demand that is asking us to suspend the system. But mm -hmm. for us, it's a matter of responding to that memorandum of demands and those meetings, marathon meetings, mm -hmm. are currently taking place. But in terms of uh, some of the things that have been recounted, um, we have been able to identify some of the challenges, and especially with the one that says it takes a long time for a bus to move from one bus stop to another. Uh, we've reduced it. There was that time. Uh, it's almost five uh, uh, seconds now mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we have we are, we are reported uh, we, are give, we are given a report that they've reduced that but the balance here that needs to be stricken is the fact that you are dealing with a system uh, mm -hmm. that is interconnected in terms of networks and digital uh, uh, space and all of that so there needs to be an account for security measures mm -hmm. and then you are able to then have that uh, system uh, so there is a balance that needs to be stricken there because if you lose your security measures there then it's easy to exploit such systems. We know about uh, cyber crimes and all of mm -hmm. those things and it's something that the company needs to be vigilant about but at the same time it's also about improving the system to work for the people. I have to be honest as well as an individual who's used Patco before it's quite slow. Mm -hmm. I was at Pennyville, one of the biggest transfer points in Soweto, and it was quite slow. Seeing a bus wait for about 15 minutes mm -hmm. and knowing exactly where these people are going in the morning, you do understand the frustrations that come from commuters. It's something that we have to work on. It's something that we echo every time we're on the field. When we get there to the office, we tell them this needs to improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Sisna Butler, let's come back to you. Um, Mr. Kuli has stated that the system is currently under review, right? What changes um, would you, w w do you think, rather, would work best for the commuters that would like to see the system, you know, should it be reintroduced? Uh, what we asked as commuters from Patco, we said, okay, you are bringing change. Yes, we are happy. But now you need to go back to your drawing, uh, drawing board mm -hmm. and try and um, see what more can you do to improve your system. And another problem, it was the drivers were from strike. Mm -hmm. So what we ask, they must wait, they mustn't introduce this new system because they're also having a problem with the drivers. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have two problems in mm -hmm. In one time, so we asked Patco to say, wait with this new system, mm -hmm. fix what the pro the first problem that you have with your drivers and everything, and then you come back and introduce this new smart tape. We don't have a problem as commuters, mm -hmm. but they need to do it in a proper way. They mustn't inconvenience us. Mm -hmm. well, well, what are the challenges that they have with their drivers? The challenge that they are having, they are short of drivers, they are short of buses after mm -hmm. the strike. We understand. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, part of life and if the drivers are not happy, we, there is nothing we can do. It's between Patco and drivers. As commuters, all we need is transport to take us to work and bring us home in the evening. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Kulu, when do you think you'll go back to, you know, the commuters or back to Bidu to say that we finalize this, this is what's going to happen, we've sorted out the issue, things can go back to running smoothly? Mm. We've already proposed, uh, today is Tuesday, that mm -hmm. on Wednesday we have an urgent meeting in terms of reporting back 
uh, to the passenger forum because we will have constant meetings. Remember that there are a formal structure uh, that is legislated by government in terms of representing commuters. They have elections like any other formal structure and they are truly elected where they are. So after that election, what is a, a, you know, a process for us is to update them, is to have meetings on a, a monthly basis just to update them uh, in terms of some of the issues that would have you know, ar arisen from our operations and mm -hmm. deal with the challenges. So we had proposed an urgent meeting outside of that setting to say that there's an urgent uh, a, a, a motion that you brought on the table in terms of this system. Let us come back to you and update you on the system so mm -hmm. that while you wait for the response in terms of the suspension, of uh, this system, then we are able then to have that sufficient, you know, knowledge in terms of what is it that is happening, what's the lay of the land that, in, in that regard. So there are proposals that are being made already, but what we do as PADCO is to ensure that we communicate with our passengers through the passenger forum, and mm -hmm. they are the ones that take that, that message to uh, some of the passengers that are not within the formal structure. But I can tell you uh, that we are trying to, to speak to them, to make them understand where we are as a company, and thereafter they'll be able to take that mandate to their workers. Uh, to, to uh, the, 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 their passengers in terms of what is it exactly that is happening with this new smart tap system. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the security measures of this smart tap system. I'm imagining someone that will use someone's access card. Just obviously, so you said it, it takes about five seconds, right? Um, just to tap and get it into takes the long. bus. The report long. says it takes five seconds. Five seconds. But I've been on the ground. It takes longer. It takes longer. Okay, so would you be able to identify the person just to see if this person matches with the access card that they're using? Look, uh, the smart tap system um, is still having security measures that guard against people who want to use over excessively um, some of the cards. For example, you cannot tap in one place um, twice. Um, so those are some of the things we guard against. But I think one of the issues that has uh, caused uh, some commotion here, and I'm speaking about internal things here, mm -hmm. but it's just to be transparent as we've always been with mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our passenger forum, is the issue of saying that uh, we want to um, guard against other things such as uh, people you know, uh, using this smart tap system to go to routes where they're not supposed to go. So mm -hmm. that is causing confusion because the old system was very open, it was a zonal system, and now we're trying to specify some of the routes because remember when we go to government and say that our system is ready they would need to know which bus is going where and how can people use those buses so if we do not specify this and we stick to zones then mm -hmm. we have a problem in terms of being part of the integrated transport system so those are all of the issues that now create frustrations but at the end of the day you look at the fact that next year mm -hmm. in March our contract the extended contracts will end with government. When we get back on the negotiation table, we need mm -hmm. to be able to show that we're moving towards integrating uh, integration, mm -hmm. we're moving towards the vision of what governments want. Otherwise, what kind of government would give you a contract mm -hmm. if you're not a, a, a configuring yourself to be part of that envisioned system that they want? So those are all the challenges that are culminating into frustrations, but we do understand because at the end of the day, we call them challenges and mm -hmm. people really, uh, you know, it disturbs their lives hoods, people get warnings at work and all mm -hmm. of that, that is not something that we want and that is why I'm saying that there needs to be a balance that is stricken here to make sure that both parties benefit from the system. Mm -hmm. So in closing, I just want you to take us through the process of loading, um, looking at the new system, what, what is different? How do you load your card, your ticket? What happens? Okay, uh, the good thing about loading this card, you, they, they are, uh, you, you load it anywhere in the They've got in the shops, garage, uh, petrol stations. They've got a lot of uh, loading stations. But the, the challenging point is when you go to the loading stations, the system is always offline. Mm -hmm. For instance, Shell Garage in Chablan Mall. The mm -hmm. system was offline from Friday until Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, for instance, Zola. We don't have an outlet in Zola mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how many people in Zola that are using Pat Coppers mm -hmm. and they need to move from Zola, go to Chablan Mall. When mm -hmm. they reach Chablan Mall, uh, Shell Garage is offline. They go to Fashion Fusion. You can imagine the queue there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I like the fact that he's here so that he jots down everything that you're saying. Whenever um, he goes to a meeting or attends a meeting, he addresses those issues so that they're resolved and, you know, commuters are happy and Padco is back on the road. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for gracing me with your presence. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. That was the spokesperson of the Padco bus company, Mr. Lindo Wuhle Tolu, and the commuters representative, Sis Nobu talking to us about the new smart tap system that Padco introduced recently, of which we are told that it has been suspended due to commuters not being so happy with its implementation. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the show by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-933-3000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So, Goodbye for now.